Hello, my name is Marie. Welcome to CU Mommy Connection. We are on location at the Champaign County Fairground for Playing It Safe 2011. This community event is hosted by Carl Foundation Hospital. It is a beautiful day and a great way to start the summer. This event is all about providing resources for families in the community as it relates to summer safety. As the school year ends and summer begins, we will focus on things that we can do in the community, but we also have a responsibility to keep our children safe, and that's what this event is all about. With me today is Amy Rademacher, and she is a representative from Carl Foundation Hospital. Amy, tell us a little bit about your role at Carl and what Playing It Safe is all about. Well, I'm the farm safety specialist here at the hospital, mm -hmm. so I teach a lot of rural citizens about safety, and, and that's my day-to-day -day job. And then I'm also the coordinator for Playing It Safe. Mm -hmm. And this is a safety event um, with about 50 different booths, all related to different types of safety in the home, outside of the home, even some farm safety, and a great opportunity to do a lot of cool um, but fun and safe things. Okay, and as you thought about coordinating this event, I hear that this is the 15th year for Playing It Safe. What were some of the things you wanted to accomplish? Well, with um, with this event, we wanted to make sure we reached out beyond Champaign-Urbana, so we did do a little bit more marketing outside of Champaign-Urbana. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to bring in some more rural stuff, but also uh, ATV safety, which might be rural or urban. Mm -hmm. um, we want it also to be a resource, not only hands-on, but resourceful for parents' things to take home. We're doing the child identification, so we want to make okay. sure they were there um, to child, you can bring your child and do child identification with them and a resource to take home. Uh, we wanted to reach all gamuts and, and different ages, so we even have some stuff for adults like heart disease and stroke, mm -hmm. um, disaster preparedness and different things like that. We wanted to reach all age groups. Okay, and so when you think about age groups specifically, it goes down as low as what age group? Well, I just asked if my eight-month-old could have do the child ID, and there's parts of it he can't do, but he can do some other pieces of that. You're probably looking at uh, three and four-year-olds would be probably the low end for really grasping what's here. Okay. Um, and then all the way up, we'll have uh, junior high age kids uh, here. So mm -hmm. quite a, a spectrum. Okay. When I think about summer safety, mm -hmm. there are some things that immediately come to mind. For example, I think about bike safety, I think about swimming pool safety, and I think about protection from the sun. Mm -hmm. What are some other things that we would need to consider when we think about summer safety? Well, those are some really good ones. Um, obviously with sun, we also just do general heat safety. Mm -hmm. um, we we thinking about um, roller blades and other things beyond bikes, pedestrian safety. We, get, we have a lot of kids out walking. We actually have a program called Spot the Tot, where you get in the car seat and you see how far you can see somebody behind the car, mm -hmm. as well as sem a semi, because we have a lot of semis that travel here in town, and we've got a car and some cones set up to see what really can you see. Okay. So Hello. those are some other things going on. Um, just, general, just some general, <laughs> just some general it's travel. Yes, it is. <laughs> We're ready to kick this thing off. Welcome, everybody, to Playing It Safe. Uh, we've been doing this for several years. The reason behind it is to make everybody safe. All the families involved here are going to learn ways how to make themselves safe in the community, mm -hmm. prevent serious injuries. So we're going to have a fun day. we got beautiful weather. And just remember, it's not that hot. Keep that in your mind. It's not hot. <laughs> it's just warm. We're going to give away a lot of prizes. I got so many prizes to give away. We got a grand prize. We got bicycles, helmets, free food, all kinds of different things. Free food. 1,500 hot dogs. Oh, wow. 1,500 yeah. hot dogs. My mouth is watering. <laughs> Every time I say that, I get hungry. 1,500 hot dogs we got to give away. So after you visit all of the different uh, stations, stop by and get a hot dog. We want to thank all of the many businesses, groups, 
So you, you heard it right here. This is the official start of Playing It Safe 2011. There's a lot going on here. And let's just talk about a couple of other things. Um, for example, who are some of the other sponsors? We know that Sonic Drive-In is actually sponsoring the 15, how many? 1,500 hot dogs. 1,500 hot dogs. And that'll be a lunch event that's at 11 o'clock today. It's for everyone who comes out to Playing It Safe 2011. Who are some of the other sponsors and organizations? Well, Eastern Illini Electric is sponsoring about 1,500 bottles of water, so we at least got you you fed and your thirst quenched, at least for a while. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Illinois State Police, we have Champaign-Urbana Fire, um, both Champaign and Urbana. Um, we have different departments at Carl, audiology, uh, the uh, sports medicine. We also have um, stroke education. I mentioned them earlier. The Champaign County Farm Bureau is here with, th uh, with three or four different booths. Made me think of food safety when he mentioned hot dogs. We have a booth on food safety. That's a good summer one, especially with the temperatures and all the potlucks to think right. about. Um, we have, I'm trying to think, the Masonic Lodge is the one doing the chip program. Mm -hmm. Stanton Stables is here doing equestrian safety. For, okay. If you're out riding a horse, some things you need to think about. And so it just the gamut, the list goes on and on. Julie's here. Call before you dig, too. Okay. All right. So, Amy, if there are families out there in the community who they just don't get the opportunity to come to Playing It Safe 2011 this year, um, let me ask you a couple of things. Number one, what would, should prompt them to come out next year? And number two, how can they find out about these resources? Well, I think you, get, you heard some wonderful reasons to come out here. Not only all the safety stuff, but we have a lot of great giveaways and, and things. It's a good thing to do right after the end of the school year, so it's a good activity. Um, next year it'll be either the first or the second weekend in June, so stay tuned. We'll get that date posted. Okay, all right. This is Amy Rademacher from Carl Foundation Hospital. Thank you so much. They are the host of this event, Playing It Safe 2011. It's all about how we can enjoy the summer sun but also keep our children safe. And everyone plays a very important role in that, even if you don't have a child. So, great reasons to come out here. Even if you can't make it out here this year, it's very important that you make it out for 2012. Thank you so much, and we'll see what else is going on with Playing It Safe 2011. I am here with Rose for the CU Safe Routes to School project. Rose, tell us about your involvement with Playing It Safe and this project. Sure. What we do is we actually do the bike rodeo or the obstacle course. Mm -hmm. um, we get kids out here. It's like we have a whole obstacle course set up for them. We have bikes and helmets, so if they don't have their own bike that they rode in today, we have them here for them. And it's just a fun way for the kids to go through different stations, focusing on different things, whether mm -hmm. it's turning, um, dodging rocks, um, staying in a straight line, mm -hmm. stopping and staying in control. It's just a fun way for them to learn some skills and, and not think that that they're learning. They're just kind of having a good time, mm -hmm. um, but it's just a, it's a really neat way for them to get on bikes. Some kids we have come out here that have never, never been on a bike. Okay. You know, so it's a good way for them. We have bikes with no pedals so that they can use the feet. So it's just a good way for any of the kids to come out and really kind of get on a bike and see what they can do. Okay. We also do, um, we have helmets then that we will fit and sell um, for $10. We have an awesome deal with Bell Helmet and we get to sell helmets for $10. But the, the important part of that is the fact that we fit them for you to make okay. sure that they fit properly, make sure they're really gonna help you in a crash. All right. I know that there are certain things that you kind of see when it's summertime. Mm -hmm. For example, I know it's summer when I start to see more children on the bike. Sure. And quite honestly, sometimes what I see scares me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really does. I'm driving in my car and I see kids on the bike. I, I, I get a little fearful. What are some things that we can say and do with our older kids to teach them about proper bike safety? Sure. Well, truthfully, once they get to about the age of 10, they really need to move out into the street and become a vehicle, just like adults on bicycles. Mm -hmm. They need to be a vehicle on the road. So they do need to follow the rules of the road. Um, but under the age of 10, or really even around that age of 10, if their parents don't feel like they have the skills yet mm -hmm. to be on the road, up on the sidewalk, really important, gotta wear a helmet. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell the kids all the time, it's not about how much you know, it's the fact that you don't know what anybody else is gonna do. Mm -hmm. So like you said, you get kind of fearful when you're that motorist out there some motorists really aren't paying attention and kids need to wear everybody needs to wear a helmet but especially with the kids because you just don't know what other people are gonna do so you have to protect yourself so the first thing we want them to do is get a helmet on the next thing that we want them to do if they're still up on the sidewalk 
watch out for cars backing out of driveways. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they stop at all corners before they cross. You know, don't just ride your bike right on across the street. Stop. Make sure that cars know that you're there before you go across. Um, once they get out into the road, they really do need to follow the rules of the road. They're just like a car. Mm -hmm. They need to stop at all the intersections. They need to signal when they're gonna turn. Don't weave in and out of cars. That's probably something you've seen that scared mm -hmm. the heck out of you because you don't know what they're gonna do. They need to be predictable. And that's why when they're on the road, if they follow the rules of the road, they're predictable. Motorists know what to expect from them mm -hmm. if they follow those rules of the road. Okay, and is there anything that we need to know about purchasing a bicycle for our children? Things that we should keep in mind? What's really good is that the bicycle shops here in town are great about fitting bicycles mm -hmm. to whatever, whether it's a child, whether it's an adult, they are great. You go in there, you know, gifts are nice, but you know, maybe you get like a gift certificate and say, okay, now let's go pick it out. Okay. You really want to have the child with you so that you make sure that you're fitting the bike to them and get that proper fit for them. Because if it's if it's too small, again, they're not gonna be really stable on it. If it's too big, they're not gonna be stable on it. So really go into the bike shops and really have somebody that is a professional fitting the, the person to the bike. Have them do that to make sure that it's a good fit for them. Okay, so keep in mind, we want our children to be able to enjoy a great summer, an accident-free summer, that is. So we got some great advice from Rose today on bicycle safety and things that we can do, simple things that we can do to keep our children safe. Rose, thank you very much. Thank you. I am here with Bonnie, Emma, and Dice. And when I think about summer safety, I'll be honest, equestrian safety did not immediately come to mind. But I'm learning that it's very important as it relates to summer safety. So Bonnie, tell us a little bit more about equestrian safety during the summer. One of the most important aspects of riding horses is to make sure that you wear a helmet. A helmet protects your head, obviously, in case you would have an unplanned dismount, as we like to call a uh, fall from the horse. Okay. But, but it's to protect our brain, which is, of course, our computer. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's probably one of the most important um, aspects of equestrian safety, in my opinion. Okay, and Emma rides. Yes, she does. So let's talk about equestrian safety as it relates specifically to children. What are some things that we should keep in mind? Um, one of the more important things is as they approach the horse, we want to approach at an angle to their shoulder. Horses have areas where they can't see as well. They can't see directly in front of them as well, nor straight behind them. And also, they can't see right under their head and neck. Mm -hmm. So the best place to approach a horse is at an angle to their shoulder and then reach up and stroke them on the neck. So if you're approaching a horse, that's, a, that's an important aspect. Another important aspect of equestrian safety is to be properly dressed. And that means to have on jeans, mm -hmm. long pants of some type, and boots or shoes that are appropriate for riding. Okay. Emma, what do you enjoy most about riding? Well, I enjoy just riding the horse because it's very fun and sometimes very relaxing. Okay. And what are some things that you uh, keep in mind when you're thinking about safety? What are things well, you do to keep safe? I always will wear a helmet and I um, just try and not be too rough with the horse because sometimes that could cause them to um, start galloping and you could take chances on falling off. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. As you heard, there are many things, many simple things that you can do to stay safe this summer. We heard about wearing helmets. Helmet safety is important whether you're riding a bike, a motorcycle, or a horse. So keep that in mind. The focus for summer safety is to have fun, but also keep our children safe. And equestrian safety is an important part of that. Thank you. This is Marie with CU Mommy Connection. I am on location with Playing It Safe 2007 at the Champaign County Fairground. I'm here with Sergeant Bill Emery, who is going to talk to us about the rollover simulator and car seat belt safety um, during the summer and actually all throughout the year. So tell us more about what you're doing here at Playing It Safe 2011. 
Well, the Damn. OSA police has, uh, are doing our rollover simulator. What it is is showing the importance of wearing a proper dress and safety belt and also having your child in a child safety seat properly. Okay. Uh, the law states that a child from birth to age three has to be in a proper dress and car seat. The law also states from birth, from age four up to including age 15, a child must, not can or should, be in either child safety seat or seat belt position anywhere in that vehicle. So in other words, a 15 year old, if they're unrestrained, I can stop that parent, that guardian, for no other reason than having an unrestrained 15 year old in the car. And it's not a $60 seatbelt ticket, but a $120 must appear in court citation. Okay. Now, this rollover more or less demonstrates why you should wear a seatbelt. Uh, we, we always roll it first with the seatbelts on mm -hmm. to show the importance of wearing a seatbelt. And then we unbuckle them. And you'll see that this vehicle rolls about 7 to 10 miles over, and uh, it will throw the individuals out. And that's where it's showing why we should wear properly just a seatbelt. But okay. a lot of people are now aware that rollovers occur at speeds of less than 12 miles an hour also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell us more about um, the car seat safety for children. I know that there were some guideline changes earlier this year. Let's talk a little bit about that as well. All right. The guidelines that were changed stated that, and it's not a law, just a recommendation, that mm -hmm. children should remain rear-facing two years of age. Uh, that's because the force of the impact is not on the chest area, but on the back and the shell of the child restraint seat, which mm -hmm. offers a little bit better protection for that child. Okay. What type of statistics can you tell us about seat belt safety as it is today? Well, I'm happy to say it's over 90% of mm -hmm. people are wearing their seat belt. And if we knew we were going to be involved in a collision or a crash, um, we wouldn't get in the car. Mm -hmm. But not knowing that we're going to be involved in a collision or a crash, we should always buckle up, be prepared just in case something happens. Okay. All right. Sergeant Emery, thank you so much. We would like to see if we could the simulator and what happens. So can you explain to us a little bit and give sure. us a dememonstration? What I'm going to do is demonstrate what happens if you're involved in a rollover and you're wearing your seatbelt. Again, this is about between a 5 to 10 mile per hour roll. It has to get itself warmed up. As in any crash, when it first gets started, it doesn't look like it's going very fast. And then it picks up speed. And what I'm going to do is show that first, and then I'm, I'll unbuckle them and show you what happens if you're involved in a crash and you're not wearing a seatbelt. Okay. All right. All right. Let's take a look. To the drum right now. Uh, we just dropped a winning ticket in there. There's another winning ticket I see. And another winning ticket. It's 10.30. They're going to get practice. If you want to get practice, don't fill out your clip. This is the reality of seatbelt safety. I shouldn't have to say any more about the importance of wearing your seatbelt. The great news is, is that we have a 90% um, rate right now on seatbelt usage, and that's great for our state. So keep that in mind. There are things for summer safety that we want to keep in mind, and that is, number one, it's very important that we always buckle up. Number two, it's also important that we continue to keep our children safe. So using a properly installed a uh, car seat is very important. There were some new guidelines related to the age in which a child should continue to be rear facing, then that's important that we make that consideration as well. This is Marie Polk with CU Mommy Connection on location at Playing It Safe 2011 at the Champaign County Fairgrounds. We're going to see what all the resources we have available in the community to keep our children safe.
did a demonstration with a child from the community simply showing what happens when we eat food. So this is a demonstration about digestion, the organs that are inside us all. Um, so Rhonda, tell us a little bit more about poison control and what Stuffy is doing here. Well, we brought Stuffy so that the children would have an opportunity to touch things. Um, some small ones are a little scared, but um, <laughs> the older ones so they can kind of have a, a visual demonstration of when you do ingest stuff. We're going to use food, of course, mm -hmm. and then how it goes throughout the body and so forth. Um, and then we're doing all poison control. We have some lookalikes, a great cabinet for like stuff that's in your home, mm -hmm. um, that motor oil versus vegetable oil and so forth like that the children are going to go through. But Steffi was just more of a visual to attract children to come over, kind of mm -hmm. play with him a little bit, and then get the information out about poison control. Okay, okay. so thank you so much. No problem. We're actually going to move over to the poison control. And right now there's a representative here from Carl with someone, and basically we'll see in just a couple of minutes, we'll, we'll compare. We'll see things that are safe, right next to something that could be potentially dangerous. And I will do the test and see if I can figure it out. Remember, it is very important for us to pay attention to things and be aware of methods that we can use, easy things that we can do to keep our children safe. So in just a moment, we'll move over to the test here where we'll try to see if I can figure out what's the safe thing and what's the potentially poisonous thing. I'm here with Lori. She works with Carl's Emergency Department and we're going to talk about poison prevention today. There is a display here and it's called hazardous lookalikes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to determine what's the safe item versus the hazardous item. That's right. Okay. That's All right. right. Okay, well, let's start with the liquid because it's the most difficult. Let's uh, let's start with this, these two. Okay. Which one do you think is the safe product and which one do you think is the poison? Well, um, it is really hard to tell and I have nothing to go by whatsoever. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this one, it's darker, it looks like soda maybe. I'm going to go with this one. Okay. Well, you would be right. This is actually syrup. But okay. As you can see, this is motor oil. Oh, wow. You see how it looks exactly the same almost, mm -hmm. except this is darker? Let's try something that looks um, very similar. How about these two? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. Both to me look like water. Um, and they look, they look identical, exactly the same. I, I'm just going to randomly pick here, and that's kind of scary for me. I have an 18-month-old, so I would be concerned if I saw these two items, you know, in the garage, outdoor, somewhere, and my child could get into it. But I'm just going to randomly pick this one as the safe item. And you would be a very lucky guesser. That is water. And this wow. is rubbing alcohol. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. And um, a lot of things, of course, these things at home would be in bottles, most mm -hmm. likely. Um, so another big... Um, uh, tricky thing is, is um, the pills forms. So like if you look at these two, um, we had a smaller child earlier say that this was a safe one and this was not. As you can clearly see, this has an M on it for M&M's. Right. But the child still thought that this was safe and these are iron tablets so oh, wow. very unsafe mm -hmm. so that's the purpose of this display is of course the lookalikes and how dangerous they can be so two things to keep in mind here number one is when we think about poison prevention as I was looking at the display I was thinking from an adult's perspective right so it's obvious to me that these green things these are the M&Ms mm -hmm. but you brought out a very important point we're talking about children that's right and poison prevention that's right right so it's it's not so easy for them to make the distinction between something that's safe and something that could be potentially poisonous. So let's do a couple of more. Okay. Um, for example, these right here, again, it's something else that looks identical yeah, virtually to identical. me. Virtually identical, absolutely. Um, yes. And again, I'm just going to guess, I'm gonna say this is the safe one. And you are actually wrong. This is a medication gum. Okay. And this is our chicorette gum. So this is safe and this is very unsafe. Okay. Um, let's try another one. Okay. Uh, children are oftentimes drawn to color, right? Absolutely. I see some pretty blue something yes. here. Again, um, I am just going to randomly pick something. This one has bubbles. I'm going to say it's safe. 
Actually, you're wrong. This is Windex and this is Gatorade. Oh. Wow. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, earlier, actually, we had a child choose between these two. Mm -hmm. The child chose this one as the safe one, and this is actually um, uh, an antacid medication. And these are the sweet tarts. Mm. And just like you had mentioned with the color, these, um, they look virtually identical. Mm -hmm. The children, um, however, the child thought, however, this was a safe one, and it's really, uh, really very unsafe. Okay. okay. What other things should we keep in mind when we're thinking about poison control and poison prevention? Uh, when it comes to medications or um, like cleaners. Anything that you would like to share with the audience? Well, the biggest thing to remember when it comes to um, medication safety is always, always keep them locked in a secure area. High, uh, definitely away from children, um, children's reach. I actually have a seven and a five year old and we do have a medicine cabinet that they can not reach into. However, kids are very inventive mm -hmm. and they can actually move their chairs from what we found out to get into those cabinets. So you really have to think almost like a child to keep those um, products safe from the children. Mm -hmm. as, so, as far as um, like floor cleaners and the liquids, definitely keep them clearly labeled. Mm -hmm. um, don't take them out of their original container. That's a big safety issue. Mm -hmm. um, most things you can smell that kids don't really know the difference. Okay. Um, so clearly label the medications and keep them out of reach. Okay. What are some of the common things that you see in the ER? Um, basically what we see is we see um, kids, of course, because it looks like candy, mm -hmm. they will take a bunch of them because they think they're either M&Ms or Skittles. Okay. And the family member will see that. Uh, the family member will say, well, that's not a Skittle. That's my cold medicine. So they'll rush them and bring them into the ER, and then we have to treat them because they had a potentially toxic ingestion of cold medicine. Okay. Um, another thing is, when it comes to liquids, because of the difference in the smell, we don't see that a whole lot, but it can happen, um, especially because of the curiosity of the child. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, Drano has a very potent smell, mm -hmm. um, but we have seen ch kids drink the Drano, um, accidentally indent and ingest bleach, but that's also because it was in within the reach of the child. Okay. So, so if we if we believe that our child has you know ingested something, what are some steps that we should take immediately, and what's information that you're going to ask us if we make a call to 911? Okay. So the there is one very good number, and that's the poison control number. It's a 1-800 number, mm -hmm. and it's on a magnet somewhere here, and um, that's the best number to know. You can call them. Of course, if there is an immediate threat, you call 911. You let you need to know exactly what they took. Mm -hmm. If they don't know what they took, try to have something else, like another um, form of it, like a pill, or if it looks like a pill, take the pill, um, because we're going to need to know exactly what we're facing. Okay. So whatever container it came in, um, and um, because not every um, toxin can be um, thrown up. Okay. Um, because it actually can cause more damage coming back up. Mm -hmm. um, also, we there are some things where you don't want to just douse it with water because uh, certain chemicals can uh, react and make a worse uh, um, trauma to okay. the child. Okay. So some key things that we want to be aware of to prevent poison um, poisoning, also to avoid things like this. Again. Some of these were really hard. Even as an adult, it was really hard for me to tell the difference between the safe item and the hazardous item. And it's an even greater challenge for children who are just curious or attracted to the color of something, thinking that it potentially is something else. So keep that in mind. The goal of Playing It Safe 2011 is all about allowing our children to enjoy the summer and enjoy some summer fun but being safe at the same time. Thank Absolutely. you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.